Hey guys, so it's been about three weeks, maybe a month now since Carter and Bacon did his walk around in my shop and showed off this Jeep and my other projects that I've got going on. Uh, so just wanted to do a walk around on this rig. It started off as a 2000 Jeep TJ Sahara edition. The actual build on this started when I was coming home back to my parents house one day and the clutch went out and we found out that when we went to do the clutch job we dropped the skid plate and the underside of both the frame rails were just completely rotted out uh, so it got 3 16ths plated on the bottom and the inside outside of both frame rails uh, and then from there it just kind of went into project mode so uh i will just kind of start from front to back and i'm sure i will miss some things but i will try to cover everything yeah so like i said just kind of start front to back uh last year well two years ago we went to moab i met up with harder and bacon we went to moab and until then i didn't have a winch so i ended up putting uh some two by six square tube rectangle tube across the front welding a plate to the top of it put a ten thousand pound winch on the front have not used this winch it's a smitty belt uh, haven't used it yet haven't needed to use it yet but felt you know we needed one just in case so that's that's there but i can't really comment on how well it works so uh i did relocate when i put the metal cloak fenders on i relocated the turn signals down here like the cjs i kind of like the way it looks a little more it just kind of gives a bit of an old school look i guess and also i just didn't really want to do the blinkers there so uh that was just drilling some holes, getting some trailer turn lights from like Napa or something, wired them in, super easy mod. Uh, up here on the hood, I have, I believe these were Genrite vents. So they make that big one that kind of goes, you know, in this center section. I just didn't really want that one. Uh, you know, a lot of people run it and I just don't care for the look overall of it. So I kind of thought this set up with a little different vents uh, was a little cooler looking uh, the main goal for me was to just have some type of vents to let hot air out you know the placement of it and stuff there's all this scientific stuff that's like you know uh, this placement's better and it gets heat out better and all that not really something i was super looking at i just wanted something while i was crawling slow to let heat up and out instead of having you know make its way down under the fenders and out so they seem to work. Uh, I put those on before we went to the Rubicon last year and it, we stopped at Hot Springs, Arizona and went out to the Rubicon and not that it was really overheating or anything to begin with, but it definitely felt cooler. And as you were sitting inside, you could see the heat, you know, radiating out of all those vents. So, uh, it seems to work. So, uh, coming back down this way. So I have a front Dana 60 Kingpin axle out of a M1008 or 9, whichever the pickup truck version is. Uh, I have the matching 14 bolt full float rear in the back there. Uh, both axles got re-geared and locked. locked. Uh, I did a ox locker in the front and an ARB in the back. I would have preferred to do aux front and back, but they do not make a locker for the 14 bolt full float. Uh, they keep saying that they're working on one, but I have not seen one yet. So, but just putting them together, I put those gears in, I put those lockers in and just putting them together. The aux just feels more simplistic and beefier than the ARB. Uh, they both work. They both work great. I've had, you know, minimal issues out of them and whatever but just if ox ever makes the the locker for the 14 bolt i will probably swap it out for the ox um so 
all the, the fabrication on the axle and the Jeep in general, we've done ourselves. I did the majority of like the framework and the axle work and all that. My dad did a little bit of body work stuff on it. Uh, so yeah, it's all, you know, in-house we did it. We didn't send it out to a shop or any of that. The mechanical stuff I've done myself. I've just learned over the years how to do gearing and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's, you know, a, a home built project. It's really cool. Uh, coming back down here, I have high steer arms. I think they came from ballistic fab, maybe? I'd have to look and see uh, for sure, but high steer arms, uh, Chevy three quarter ton disc brake front and rear from Lugnut Off Road, I think is the company. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, track bar and, you know, high steer all that made that up myself it's one and a half inch tubing quarter inch wall welded in the bones heim joints on each end uh, got the anti-rock sway bar here i used to have this mounted up here with this to keep it up higher and ended up having issues as everything compressed as all the suspension either came up or you know I let it down what have you I was having issues with this bar contacting the pitman arm and the joint there where this bar is attached uh, so I had to move it back down here with the Chevy one ton TREs it's not a huge deal I haven't hit it on anything uh, you know I suppose I'll probably try to put it up higher again if I redo things but it seems to work fine uh, I have a PSC steering box it's just a regular TJ PSC steering box with a hydro assist ports hydro assist ram for the PSC steering um let's see kind of moving back a little bit I have ORIs on all four corners I really like those things I need to spend more time dialing them in but they are 14 inch on all four corners and if you don't know about the ORIs they are essentially a nitrogen shock that is your shock your spring your bump stop and your limit strap all together in one package uh, they're really cool and I have loved them so far I don't know if you're actually supposed to do it or not but one of the things that I did going out west, and it seemed to work really well, was I let the nitrogen out of, I forget which it is, I think it's the top. But let the nitrogen out of the top, and that allowed the Jeep to sit the whole way down as low as it can on the trailer. So as I was cruising out there, uh, you know, one, just kind of sitting down lower, I guess probably keeps less wind from hitting it and you have less drag but it also just kept it from bouncing on the trailer as much again not really sure if you're supposed to use them that way but i have the tank to fill them and the valves and all that to fill them myself so i just carried that along and pumped them back up when we got out there uh so they're really cool they're really cool shocks right now i'm running uh who are these i think they're PRP, yeah, PRP limit straps on the front here. Uh, for a while, I wasn't running those, but I am right now because I found out that at full extension, the front drive shaft on the other side is binding. So right now I've got it limited by about two inches on either side. I kind of want to redo things and eliminate that and figure out how to get full droop and not have limit straps. But yeah, we'll figure that out later on. Uh, tires, I'm running 40 by 13.5 R17 tires. They are Pro Comp Extreme MT2s. They have been great tires. I originally got them because they were kind of on the more affordable end of the price range and because they came with a 40,000 mile warranty. Uh, and I do drive this thing on the road quite a bit. So that's why I got them. And, uh, They've been great. They've been great. Um, haven't left me stuck anywhere so far and aren't really getting chewed up or any of that. So. Moving back down in this area, 
so the front suspension is a three link with Johnny joints on each end. These arms, I believe, are about 36, 38 inches long, so I guess they'd be considered a long arm. Kind of going along with that, this bracket here and a lot of the brackets that I've used are barns. Uh, I like their stuff and their prices are usually pretty decent and I'm pretty close to their building. It's only a couple hours away, so if I need something real quick, I could go get it. Um, so I like Barnes equipment and Barnes tabs and all that. I do have a plasma table now, so I kind of make a lot of that stuff myself, or I will be. Uh, but if I ever need anything just like super quick, I don't have steel, what have you. Uh, yeah, I like Barnes equipment. So continuing, uh, under the hood there's really not much changed. I uh, still have the 4.0 backed by an MV3550 transmission. Behind that, I do have an Atlas II speed. Uh, I put that in, let's see, probably right before Moab, I believe, two years ago. Uh, I like that thing. That's really awesome to have. I have the twin sticks, so I can do front low by itself, rear low by itself, front digs, and all that fun stuff. Uh, it works really well. Uh, but under the hood here, again, uh, really, really not much else changed. I have you know, a little air thingy just because with the shock hoops, I couldn't run the stock air box, but it's whatever. I do have a, I think it's a Dodge 2500. I'd have to look it up again. A master cylinder to run the three quarter ton disc brakes front and rear. Uh, but that's about it. Everything else is stock. Coming down the side here, I made these rock rails slash boat side slider things right before we went to the Rubicon. I uh, was told multiple, multiple times and seeing online or whatever, you're going to hit your rockers, you're going to hit your rockers. I had rust going on anyway, so I decided to cut out, I believe. I believe I came up about four inches on the side and three inches in and cut the whole, you know, section out of the side of the Jeep. Uh, built this, you know, got this bend. I took it to a shop and got that bin put in it, but, uh, you know, built this and welded it together. I did it kind of quick, so it's not the prettiest, but anywho, it works really great. Uh, it's really stiff, really secure up underneath. I do have it bolted just kind of in a couple places, but also I have tabs that go under the body mounts. And uh, so far I've not hit it on anything. I did not hit it at the Rubicon. I have not hit it anywhere else. So, you know, I don't know how well it works testing wise, but it looks pretty good and it's really stiff. So I'd imagine it works just fine. Uh, inside, uh, so I have the PRP seats. I forget which model this is, but they are very comfortable. They're kind of big to fit in this cab but especially me being short like this bottom piece is longer than the factory seat so my legs really don't have much room there but it's fine um dash is all still pretty much stock i did put switches it's hard to see but right here i do have my switches for the arb pump the arb locker and the aux locker it is an electric actuated aux locker um, so dash wise that's really all i got going on right here again kind of hard to see but i do have the twin sticks for the atlas uh they're cable driven and i forget who i got the shifter from maybe something like northwest fab uh the shifter is really nice so if you're into end up looking for a shifter i would highly suggest that company but yeah uh that's pretty much what's going on inside here so kind of getting to another big item you can kind of see here and here uh at one point right about the time i went to the tons and 40s i was like you know i want to stretch this thing out so we did the tj6 conversion and we cut the tub here and the frame right about the same place to match. Stretch this all out 15 inches, put a section in, same thing with the frame. And that allowed me to run a LJ uh, 
roll cage and the LJ top. This is a rampage top. Uh, so that's why I did that was so that I could run these tops. I used to run the windows in the rampage top. Uh, when we went to Moab, I had the windows in. When we went to the Rubicon, I had the windows out. I will probably not put the windows back in. I kind of have some plans that I'll go over here in a minute uh, to rebuild things. And I'm thinking I'll probably leave the windows out and do more of like a truck bed type deal in the back where it's just open. Uh, so continuing back here, suspension wise, again, I have the 14 inch ORI struts. Uh, I have a four link triangulated upper, pretty much straight lower suspension or, you know, link system going on back here. And the 14 bolt with, I think that was an R2 truss or who's got the little skull? Ballistic, maybe ballistic, uh, with the pinion guard and all that incorporated into it. Um. Moving back here. So right now I'm running this just kind of real quick built rack thing. I did this right before we went to the Rubicon so that I could throw the spare tire up in here. I don't like it. I don't like the spare being here necessarily. So it's going to get changed, but that's what's going on. Uh, and it works. It's fine, but just don't want it there. Uh, I also have the fuel tank in here, a uh, fuel cell, and this came from Motobuilt. That's who it is. So that's a Motobuilt tank. It's the bigger of the TJ tanks. Uh, it works well. It's fine. Uh, it takes up a lot of space in here. It's another thing that I will be taking out and changing, hopefully. But uh, when I was getting ready for Moab a couple years ago, I have a nice gin right tank that goes up underneath, but I couldn't get the exhaust routed between the tank and the shocks and all that stuff. I just couldn't get it routed quite in a way that I was liking. So instead of cutting the exhaust off and dumping it underneath and all that, I just took that tank off, got the fuel cell up here in the back. And actually you can kind of see I have the muffler right there. I just routed the exhaust kind of like a JK. Uh, again, I want to change things. I want to redo it. I want to put my Genrite tank back up under here. This tank is great. It works fine. It's nice and big, holds a lot of fuel, uh, but that fuel pump is really noisy being right behind the cab area like that. And also I want my space back, back here in the back. So, uh, I used to have the spare tire on a carrier back here. When we went to Moab, uh, I noticed at one point that there was a rattle going on and I noticed that it was real loose here and I thought that the bearings on the spindle had gone bad so I wrapped a ratchet strap around the roll bars and around the tire went to Moab everything was fine came home everything seemed fine I went to you know just kind of open everything up and get equipment out and all that and I took the ratchet strap off and as soon as I took the ratchet strap off of these roll bars the whole thing just fell on my floor and at the time uh, they had actually finished my shop while we were at Moab, so it was brand new and it immediately gouged out a piece of my floor, so I was immediately really upset about that, but, you know, it it is what it is. Um, so anyway, that's how it kind of got moved from back here to up there. I think what I'll probably do when I kind of redo and move things and whatever is put the spare tire back here you know like a factory but i think i'll do some type of drop down instead of a swing out uh, one i think it'll just be stronger you know two mounting points and some type of latching system but two if i ever actually need it you know you drop it down and it's kind of easier to maneuver from down here rather than get it from up here so probably what i'll end up doing um that's pretty much the walk around uh, the only other thing that i'm seeing offhand is just the fact that i'm running this wind jammer i forget who it is maybe a smitty build or something but uh, when we went to 
I don't know, either Moab or Rubicon or something, I decided I wanted to get rid of these rear windows. And I got that just so that the wind wasn't coming around and getting us. But, but yeah, that's pretty much the walk around of the TJ6.